that can seem stressful trying to pick these colors. But just remember, you don't have to get them exact. It's even professionals couldn't just get them exact, exact like that. They might get it very close, but. Whoa, you can build that up really thick. This is the smooth wet knife. You can switch brushes on. Light touch. Spread this out. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw. This is actually going to come down. Come down here. Um, okay, now what, what I want you to look at is this shape here. <laughs> Be familiar with that shape. See that this is too pink, so what I need to do is come back towards the yellows. Keep coming back towards the yellows because it's the right amount of gray, the right amount of saturation. So just keep. Keep coming back to the yellow. It'll be mixing with the uh, already existing, the grainy mixing knife. So that'll be fine. Sampling from some of these darker colors, you need to go more dark. So is that the right amount of blue? The right amount of green? It's not, a right, it's not the right amount of blue. Soft edge there. All right, so let's go more blue. Is this the right amount of blue? No, it needs to go more blue. Is this the right amount? No, more. Is this the right amount? Of blue? No, more. Is this the right amount of blue? Getting close. More. We have candidate. Now it. Without the mixing, it looks a lot more, a lot more blue. <laughs> Pull that snap back. That's, it's not bad. Sample some of this color. I remember one time I was drawing a portrait, I think I was 16 years old at my first job in KFC, I was drawing on the back of a paper plate, drawing a portrait of one of the employees. And uh, and I, I, I realized I had this ability to kind of project what I was looking at onto the surface uh, that I was drawing on. So like I looking up and down at her, when I, I looked down at the plate, I could see uh, in a way her, her face still there. It's, and in a way, you can look at it scientifically as the after image that's produced when uh, the light from what you're looking at is burned into your retina. A really cool thing where uh, it's an optical illusion where you can look at a certain colored uh, screen full of very pastel bright uh, lights, very subtle, and then look at a black and white image and see it all in color vividly. And then after a second, few seconds, it's gone and it's a black and white image, like it always was. Really crazy. The scumble over the top there, need some darks. Light touch is good with this brush, and it's one reason I kind of need to practice it. I tend to have too heavy of a hand. Changing how oh, soft that edge is there. Now, the drawing. Am I going out too far measurement from here to here? Get that out of the way to check better. Get it to the same size. Both screens. Now, this has got muddy. Race. <clears throat> okay, now this, this is dark. Okay, we know they're on the same same zoom level and same positioning, so we can trust that if we get the drawing right just as we see it, then it'll be right. It's the most important part of the picture near where his eyes are, so that's why it's the area of the greatest contrast. You've got all these colors and 
color contrast and value contrast. Darks, the lights, very bright, saturation, and uh, very dull as well. These colors are going to mix, so just have to kind of be aware of that if you're working with this software. By the way, you should try uh, Painter 2020, uh, 2021 has come out, and you can get a three-month uh, trial. So you should check it out. Probably want to buy it at the end of it. Anything like me. Let's get these lines right. I had a sloppy drawing so far. Think of it like a face. Here's the forehead, here's the nose, here's the chin. It helps me, it might help you. There's the forehead. Okay. You have the nose. I love the art pen, so you can just you can move around that line. Turn the palette knife. That's why this is this is kind of a wonderful little drawing tool. Drawing and painting. Yeah, this is definitely better than any stock big paint brushes. So I guess why they're the ultimate. Uh, Skip's a great guy and very generous artist. These are free brushes, amazingly. You could sell them for a lot of money. But Skip's back and I love artists like that. They're so greedy. Uh, I'm always going to remember where I came from. It's one thing. I'll never hesitate to help another struggling artist when I can because I know I know what it's like to be one. To not have that inspiration. Just be stuck. Feeling like you don't know where to go or how to learn what you want to learn. It's just be overwhelming. But one way or another, you have to learn how to get into the cockpit and uh, maximize your own abilities through a greater sense of confidence in yourself. It's too green. Let's try some blue. It's too blue. Try some gray. Try some warm to neutralize that. Let's go back to this green. Okay, now let's get the drawing right here. What's the shape? Comes here, then goes down, and comes in. So let's let's duplicate that. Comes up, comes in. Okay, good. Now this comes at an angle. So I'll touch the flatten the paint. Something like that. Okay, this comes down. How far does it come down? Not very far, about to right there. Always editing, always correcting for any mistakes that might have come before. Don't think of them as mistakes, think of them as initial applications, initial test runs. So there's no failure aspect to a test run, it's just checking out, see what this does, see what that does, see how this performs, see, you know, see what mileage we get out of this, like that. So when you think of it like that, it takes a lot of pressure off. Anything to take the pressure off. If you're anything like me and struggle with that, that feeling pressure, then think of it as, think of your initial lock-in as just a test run, just laying down some colors, laying down some values, laying down values first and then deciding the colors. But if, when you start from a color basis, your painting will tend to have a, a richer feel to it. Now, I want to... fix the drawing down here. Okay, this comes out farther. Light touch. Smooth this down. <laughs> push this back. And kind of push the line, that's interesting. One technique. Now he's throwing some greens in there. See how he gets away with doing that? 
and they're toned down. They're gray greens. Somewhere down in this starker. Maybe a little lighter. See how that complementary pair works together? Now, uh, judging the distance from here to here, have it about right. <laughs> this is going to come down here. Now, let's get this inside shape. We'll like that one. But let's get this drawing down here. Make sure it's correct first before we do anything. Now, I can see that the angle is not quite right. It should be something more. Something more like that. Okay, and then let's bring the tone down. Let's tone it down a little bit. I'm just looking at that negative space, just thinking like a sculptor, scraping away that paint to reveal the image that I want. Darken it up a little bit. Nice green color. Okay, do we have the drawing correct? Well, it looks to me like it comes out here. Looks like it needs to be more saturated. Let's be darker. And what is the slope here? Like a slope. Think about how it connects with this angle. Come down a little bit. Go back in there. It's going to be a dark, a dark little. Kind of push the paint in to give it that look. It is, it, it's a little bit like working in 3D. A little bit. It's pretty fun. And mimicking paint on this uh, very subtle level is it's, it's pretty pretty amazing. Now, this, this triangle, lean back, you look at this, where is it going wrong? Okay, this can come more in, then get this, let's correct that angle, comes up, and then it gradually Gradually comes out. Okay. Now, like this, I have to get that shape right. Let's throw that red, actually, red orange. Now, what is off about this?
Now, when doing this stuff, it's easy to get very precious and you can spend hours on little details that don't really matter when you zoom out. I mean, it's, it's cool to work with the brushes and, and get used to them, but, you know, the most important thing is getting these shapes in there. So don't lose sight of the overall focus of why you're in here in the first place. If you're anything like me, you're kind of avoiding it somewhat and doing doing other areas, just, uh, eating the crust around the pop tart, so to speak. But at some point, you have to just say, okay, enough. I'm going to uh, I'm going to tackle that eye or whatever it is, and do it boldly, do it carefully, with confidence. Keep carving, keep working into it, keep color correcting. <laughs> Look at, that. Look at that interesting shape. <coughs> Comes in here. You get a really high value. Where the light sort of flex this eye. You get another really light value. Occlusion shadow, so it's going to be warmer. Soft touch. A little lighter. This is a muddy color. Some life. It looks like a purple, doesn't it? Let's make sure it's not a gray. A uh, gray orange. A gray orange is going to give you it would be the mixture of Okay, obviously, ours is too cool, so we need to warm it up now. We're going to go move towards yellow to do that. No, that gives us even cooler. We're going over in the greens and blues, so we need to go more towards actual purple. So, therefore, it's going to be a reddish gray. Okay, that appears purple in the context of this painting. Let's get that orange, pick it up a notch, bring some light into those shadows. Bring this back. Okay, let's get some of that bright color. The drawing right.
the dark. Once you get some colors down, you can just sample from, from what you already have. And that's that's what you want to do as much as possible because it it um creates color harmony. Because if you're using the same colors, naturally they're gonna be harmonious. Some of that dark. Look at where the eye is. Okay, come back on it. It's going to be more to the front. So he's looking that way. Then we're going to have this highlight. Let's put it on a, another layer. The pink. I see. Very saturated.
you might see me doing that, I'll sample a color and then I'll adjust it based on what I need. It's on. And notice the greens, notice the cool colors in the beard here. Now, where do we get those cool colors? Well, they're not in these grays, you can see. So we're gonna have to come over here by the greens to find them. That might work there. And we can just cool them up a little bit. Start to get those cool. You'll often find greenish tones in the in the in the lower part of the face. Now these look Maybe two greens, so let's pull back. Bring some warmth to them. Also mix in those browns. Tone them down. Red and green are opposites. We'll create kind of neutrals. Okay. Now, looking at the, the distance here, it would appear that you come way down here. Also needs to come out more. This comes up outside the eye. Just playing with and mixing these colors, seeing how they act together. Got the furrowed brows. We need to get more yellows into the skin tones. So find out where that tone can be applied. Go ahead and apply it. And bring some color into his face. There's many tones that make up skin tones, as you can see very well here. You can quickly mix colors right there on the canvas. Just like you can with a real palette knife. Makes it really, really fun to work with this. Colors mix very organically, very easily. A lot of that is thanks to this brush setting set. And our friend David made for us. Or I mean, Skip, Skip Allen, I mean. He has a friend, David. He's also an artist. Okay, now how far away from the edge of the canvas does this need to be? These are the these are the uh, you know you can get caught up in the, the drawing and the coloring, but if you don't know where you are, then that's a problem, and it's one you're gonna have to fix later. So, like my dad always said, do it right the first time. So focus on that initial groundwork that you're laying is in the right place. Imagine you're you got blueprints for a house, put that first brick down, and you think it's in the right place, but it's not, and you start adding more and more, and you get to the end day's work, and you're proud of yourself and then you go look at plants and you did it in the wrong location. Now, that would be a lot more serious and a lot more difficult to fix, but we just want to prevent that from happening by trying our best to get it right the first time. I notice this needs to be, this color here needs to be more, uh, it's too bluish. It might just be because it doesn't have enough saturation. Let me go over blue, sample it again, this green, Okay, leaning back, squinting, see where this is actually going to go. See this shoulder. This doesn't have any color, it's bleached out. You don't want that. You want something more, like maybe those two mixed. 
and then add some yellow into it. Make it a green. It comes up from the eye. And back here, back here, and back here, comes up higher, higher. Okay, juxtaposed by this green. I want to take a take a look at what I got so far. This is close to white, so it is bleached out. It's just the fabric, but it also has a tint to it. 